Hey Amen. Especially if it comes to my wife and my kids. Better watch it. <laughs> there ain't gonna be no Holy Ghost. Oh, I love you. No. Ah, I'm human. Hey Amen. All right. Now I go to five and six. Galatians five and six. But I want to show you that I was coming at the word. Hey Amen. I long suffered long enough, but I'm not gonna have babies be offended. Hey Amen. I'm just not. How many of you would let somebody just come up and talk to your babies and say anything? If a strange man walked up to your daughter, 12 year old, ain't you gonna walk right over there? What you doing? Hey Amen. Well, what's up? What you going to look at? What, what? What you saying to my baby? Amen. Amen. Same thing. Same thing. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. But faith, the trust, and confidence, which worketh by what? Love. Amen. All righty. Where are we at now? It is faith that sees the invisible. Here's the inaudible. Believe the incredible and the impossible. Did y'all hear that? Let me say that again. It is faith that sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, believes the incredible, and does the impossible. Let's go to Matthew 17. I thought that was good. I thought that was good. Matthew 17, verse 20. 17, verse 20. And Jesus said, to them. Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith, confidence or trust, as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be, it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, let's go to one of the favorite uh, faith chapters. Let's go to Hebrews. Y'all pray for me. Because you need to understand something. It is faith that pleases God. Everybody agree with me on that. It is faith that pleases God. Yeah. Hebrews 11. Yeah. Hebrews 11. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 11. I'm going to read from verses 1 through 6. Now faith, the trust and confidence, is the substance of hope for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do which do appear let's keep reading by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, means he, he went to heaven without dying. Amen. Amen. There's only two people in the whole Bible that never experienced death, and that was Enoch and Elijah, because he was just tramped. God just said, I love you so much, I'm just taking you out of here. Never experienced that. And Elijah took off on a chariot. But we gotta watch this stuff, because today, right now, the world is teaching this crap about aliens, and aliens were the gods in every religion now. We got all the tools from the ancient day, that day of nothing but aliens who set themselves up as gods. But see, you know what? I gotta be honest, because I'm a technologist, and I was telling this to Ron. This stuff sounds logical, right? Just like evolution. We came from monkeys. Give me a break. <laughs> It looks logical. My mind logically said, that could be true. But my faith said, it is not true. See, my logical mind said, that could be right. They had these tools in those years, in those days, back in those millions of years ago. How could they build this? Or how could they build those pyramids and all that without some kind of technology? They even showed they even had a battery back then and a light bulb. Hello. Yeah. Electricity was way back then in the Egyptian day. So my mind said, well, where did they get it from? Some other alien from some planet. But by faith said, I'm sorry, I met Jesus. You're not going to tell me some alien set himself up. They even took it to the scripture that an alien came down and picked up Jesus when he ascended. Now, your logical mind said, you know, that might have been right. But your faith should say, 
said, ain't no way. No way. Amen. Amen. I need to put that out there because watch what they're doing today. The devil's using every technique he could possibly use to get you to believe that there's no God. Because if he can get you to believe there's no God, you won't believe there's no devil. And the biggest trick that the devil played on mankind was to get you to believe that he don't exist. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go back up to verse 1. The phrase, things not seen, is literally things not yet seen. So if we look at verse 1, and we look at the bottom of that, it says, now faith is substance. That substance means heavenly substance. It ain't nothing that we can create down here. Because the faith is a heavenly substance. What? Trust and confidence in him. Amen. Of the things hoped for. That word hope in the Greek means confident expectation. So faith is the substance or heavenly thing that is confidently expected. Oh, y'all are not getting this? Because you can't have faith and not confidently expect something. Amen. Then it says, and the evidence of things not seen. Meaning you haven't seen it yet. Your faith has to go to a place that you believe it so deeply without you seeing it yet. I didn't know 15 years ago I would be standing here in Montgomery. God was giving me visions. God was letting me see it before it happened. But me going through my struggles of addiction and whoredom and up and down and going to jail and, and all this stuff, I never thought I'd be here. But faith said, I'm going to make it. Amen? But faith told me he has a destiny for me. And I'm going to fulfill it. That's how I jump off a bridge. Don't knock nobody because they fell. You know, the thing I try to get across people, and I'm not speaking about nobody, but it may go down that line, you know, there are people here who fell, y'all saw them get healed, y'all saw them look like they were making it, now they look like they right back where they started. Don't you know, it takes a longer time to get straight. Now watch this, it don't take no time to get back to where you were. Y'all ain't hear me? a short of time to get back to it. Let me tell you, dude, I got so clean. But as soon as I relapsed and started smoking again, within two weeks, I looked like I never stopped getting high. But the thing is, the thing is, people didn't pray for me half the time. Only the ones who were going through the same thing I was going through came to my rescue. Because they could relate to me. So that means I can get out of it. So if you see somebody, uh -oh. so if you see somebody you know who looks worse than their first condition, you need to say, brother, be encouraged. Brother, can I help you? Brother, I love you. Can I pray for you? Brother, do you need a hug? Instead of saying, see, I told you so. Because if anybody could relate, you just should be you. Amen. Amen. Because they're hurt, people. They're embarrassed. They never thought they would be in that position again. You know, they would, they probably figured in their mind, I wish I had never got. Clean. But to get clean and then fall worse than you fell before, it hurts. You don't want to be around the people because it's embarrassing. Let them know they don't have a reason to be embarrassed. Let them know, come on back, we love you. Even if they don't come back, their pride has to die, but they need to know they don't need to feel ashamed. I can't wait to see the ones who fell. So I can go hug them. Amen. I ain't going to support their addiction, but I will support them. Amen. 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 Hey, brother, give me a quarter, give me a dime. No, I'll take you to buy a meal. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to help you sin, but I'll help you through your sin. Amen. 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 That was a sad thing. All right, what was you saying? Faith is the substance of what you know is coming your way. Even though it is not yet seen. Faith isn't wishful thinking. No. Based upon the word of God, faith says, whether I see it, presently, understand it, 
intellectually or experience it immediately. I know what God says. He'll believe God is. Amen. You will believe God is. And God will do. Amen. Amen. Whether I see it intellectually, whether I see it immediately, I'm still going to believe God is and God will do. Amen. Oh, y'all not. Oh, my goodness. Let's keep reading it. <laughs> Where did I leave off here? Now, let's go to verse 6 again. Let's look at verse 6. And verse 6 says, but without faith, it is what? Impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he what? Didn't I just say it? He is. Amen. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently what? Seek him. Amen. Amen. Here are two keys to faith. Ready? The first is to believe that God is, just like I said. First is to believe that God is. Who do I say you are? Moses asked God, what did he say? I am that I am. And that's a Hebrew word to say, I'm self-existing one. I am the self-existing one. Amen. So when he's telling Moses, I am that I am. Uh, when God answered him that I am that I am. In other words, God said, I am whatever you need. I had to write all this down because it was blessing me at home. Let me tell you. I am whatever you need. Are you lonely tonight? Hmm. God is the friend that is closer than a brother. Hello. Are you confused about what to do? He is the door for your unconfusion. Oh, man. Are you feeling like you are walking in a haze? Are you feeling? Hello. Are you feeling like you're walking in a haze? Now watch this. <laughs> He's the God shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the best shepherd. He's your only shepherd. Are you here? Above all things. 
means taking the what? Shield of faith. And what will it do? With Wherewith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the who? But it takes your shield of faith to stop that. So cover your brother and sister with your shield of faith. Come on now. Don't talk about them. Cover them. Use your faith to help theirs. Amen. That's how I got out of mind. I had a bunch of good friends back home when my faith drove me to jail, when my faith drove me to the mentally ill hospital, when my faith drove me to the next crack dealer or the crack house, there were some people out there who loved me enough that they used their measure of faith that God don't kill him. God, you bring him out. God, we're going to pray for him. God, we're going to help him. Amen. Because guess what? If you don't do that, sooner or later, your turn going to come. Just keep living. Don't think you've achieved. One day, you're going to have to go through the same thing. And if you put out that same seed of faith for your friend, for your brother or sister in Christ, your turn going to come. They'll be strong enough to put their faith out for you. Amen. That's why we're called the body people. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Now, we almost finished with faith. Boy, I'm going to have 15 minutes to cover the rest. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, looking at verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more what? Highly than he ought to think. Let to think soberly. According as God has dealt to every man the measure of what? Faith. Ain't that what I just got finished talking about? Amen. Your measure of faith. Amen. So when my faith depletes, use yours to increase me. Help me with your measure of faith. I would say, oh brother, you need more faith. No, use yours to give me more. Amen. Help me. I'm not on your level. I don't believe like you yet. God hasn't shown himself in my life. I've been a sinner for 33 years before I got saved, so I know more about sinning than I do about being saved. So what do you think I'm going to gravitate to? Sinning. That's when you are mature in the body and got a greater measure of faith should help me. Amen. Amen. I think I'm speaking to the wrong crowd here. Am I? Amen. 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 Go to Jude. Do that book right behind Revelation. Y'all know I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. Well, that's how I learned the Bible. I come from a teacher who made me dance all over the place. And then in doing that, I learned where all the books were. <laughs> He didn't just stay in one place, and all I knew was the book of Matthew and didn't know where nothing else was. Amen. <laughs> he made me work to find that. Where's that? Where's that? Amen. Jude 1 and 20. Now, I'm not going to cover, because there's a lot of meat in just this one verse alone. And uh, I'm not going to cover everything on it, but I'm going to show you when it just deals with faith. Verse 20. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your what? Most how holy faith or trust in confidence. Pray in the what? Holy Ghost. I'm not going to cover that. Okay? That's all. Well, let's just keep moving on. What is the meekness of God? Meekness is not weakness. Hello. I think we talked about it last time when I told ladies, a gentleman. Sometimes y'all see a man who's a gentleman, y'all view him as weak. Sorry. But the one who's treating you like a dog, you view him as strong. Amen. So, be humble. Be is not weakness. Matter of fact, I told y'all last week too that if that man is opening that door for you, buying you dinner, and bringing you flowers, he must respect you. Because he ain't going to do that. And if he told you I ain't going to sleep with you until I marry you, oh, he really respects you. But see, me and her, that's the way our relationship, I knew I had a real lady. She shut me down at the door. I know you like what you see, but you ain't getting it till you put a ring on it. And my wife said that. Ah, uh -uh, ain't nothing coming down over here. And I said, okay, baby, I'm glad you told me that because that's just what I was looking for. Because if you would have dropped them, if you would have dropped them, I would have took it and I wouldn't have respected you no more. Me. 
many people say that? Oh yeah. When you thought I was gonna say I'd have turned it down? No. Hello, silver. But I wouldn't have married you. Y'all like my kind of preaching. Timothy chapter 6. Man, I didn't even get to temperance. We may have to come back 
and do one more week, man. First Timothy. Verse 11, but thou, O man of God, 